So I am here with Rochelle Davis, who is a senior software engineer here at Blizzard Entertainment. Rochelle, it's so wonderful to be speaking with you today. It's How great to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. So we are here, we have a bunch of really fun things on this table, which we'll get to in a minute. But first, let's talk a little bit about your career. So what has your career been like here at Blizzard? I have been at Blizzard for eight years now. I just celebrated my, I call it my Blizzardversary last week. And um, I started as an intern, actually. Oh my gosh. I was just a baby then, but <laughs> I started as an intern. I was in grad school and I had set my sights on Blizzard long before that and I had finally made it here. I was working on a project that was not announced at the time. I didn't even know walking into my first day what game I was working on. And when I did arrive, I found out it was a game called Pegasus, which is better known as Hearthstone. Yep. It launched a couple years later and uh, you know, I did get to stay. I interned for that summer. I asked if I could stay and extended my internship into that fall. I graduated and I returned full time in the next January and the rest is sort of history. So I worked on Hearthstone for five and a half years, oh my which is somewhat appropriate as they are team five. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I took advantage of Blizzard's internal mobility program mm -hmm. and I switched over to work on some of our new projects. So it's been a great eight years. I'm looking forward to many more. Wow. So we are surrounded we are in Hearthstone Tavern. Mm -hmm. I could not be more excited. <laughs> but also we're surrounded by these beautiful swords and shields. Can you, so you've been here for eight years. Can yes. you tell us how those swords and shields and this beautiful stein maybe relates to the number of years that you've been at Blizzard? Sure, so we have these great service awards here. Um, they're also awesome swag. And it's really cool to be able to sip like this thing right here. This is the two year service award. You wanna hold it? Yes, it's amazing. You've been here two years? It's very heavy. Oh my gosh, I've been here for two years? <laughs> what happened? I've been time traveling? You, you don't even notice how fast time passes here. It's that much fun to be a Blizzard. No, this, this is absolutely beautiful and it has all of the games on here, mm -hmm. even a terrible little Murloc, so. <laughs> yes. So yes. this is our two year service award and then at five years you get a sword um, and they're real and you can also sign up to take classes on how to use it if you want. It's kind of cool. And then if you stick around for 10, you get a shield and then you're fully decked out to go decked out to go to war um, and mostly you hang those up in the office although you can take them home if you want but we're surrounded here by swords and shields which is really cool to see how many people stay that long and then there's more because Blizzard's been around much longer than 10 mm -hmm. years so at 15 years you get this awesome ring that's Ooh. kind of like a Blizzard class ring if you will it's got it's blue mm -hmm. Blizzard blue yeah. and um, 15 years is a long time so not everybody gets to that point but a lot of people do have their rings and then at 20 20, you get a helm, which is, Ooh. it's very heavy. Yeah. I've tried one on, like they're yeah. not intended to be worn. Are they are they custom fit for different people's heads or is it one helm fits all? It is more one <laughs> helm fits all. But I don't think you're really expected to go walking around with it. Uh, <laughs> but on. it is pretty cool to try, you know? Um, but they're beautiful. And the, those few that do have them, have mm. them displayed in these awesome boxes that like have this great setup. It's, it's I mean, really cool to see. I mean, I have to ask, has anyone tried to walk around with the helm, the sword, the shield. Oh, that's and the a good rain. question. Uh, it sounds <laughs> like the next BlizzCon needs a cosplay. I think so. <laughs> I definitely think so. So, you know, we also, let's just get into it, some of the great things we have here. So, we also have this beautiful box right here. This one is for World of Warcraft. It has all these signatures on here. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. So, this is one of our collector's edition boxes. Yeah, well, this is for uh, Battle for Azeroth. Mm -hmm. And what we do here is we celebrate launches and we have these great parties out on the main quad of campus with our giant orc. Um, and then the people on the team, and when I say on the team, I mean everybody involved in shipping that game, mm -hmm. come together to sign and we get these long lines. I mean, we're talking like hours long that people wow. wait. And this is Blizzard employees that are fans of our products. So they wait to get all these incredible signatures. And you've got some of the game devs from you know the actual team building the right. game, as well as the external team supporting it so PR HR legal uh, QA everybody's name on here worked I mean wow. this looks like almost at this looks like, and I'm terrible at the jelly bean guessing game, so this is me guessing horribly, like anywhere from 50 to 100 signatures, is that roughly? I'm trying to imagine the tables, <laughs> that at least that many bodies. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, that looks like this many scribbles. This is so cool. So yeah. any 
any Blizzard employee can go and get um, the game signed, especially if they're a fan. Yes, and it's yeah. always preceded by these great like presentations. Oftentimes we have our president and some of our executive leadership up there as well congratulating the team. Usually we also have a um, flag that's raised so that we get the, the emblem of the game kind of wow. waving in the wind for all to see. That is that is so wonderful. So I'm gonna put this down because I don't think you guys can see this, but this is quite heavy actually. <laughs> so it contains real game it, gear. It contains well. real 100% organic game. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the next question that I want to get into is leadership here at Blizzard. So I'd love you to talk a little bit about what you think, first of all, is a great trait just in general for a leader to have and maybe how you've seen some of that reflected here at Blizzard. Sure. Well, I would say that the leaders that I'm most inspired to follow mm -hmm. um, and I think the ones that do just the best job at, at leading a group are those that listen well. Right. And I think listening has a lot of different pieces to it. And when I'm talking about listening, it's kind of four main groups of people that you're listening for. Um, there's the individual. Uh, so if, if you're my lead, you know, right. and you're listening to me talk, you're right. hearing what I say. There's the team or the company, kind of the bigger aggregate. Mm -hmm. There's the people that that leader is looking to as their leader. So what does you know, the, their manager want from them or their president want from them? Mm -hmm. And then there's also a really important group, which is the players, or in, well, in our case, it's that's the outside right. group consuming what we make. So somebody who's really excellent at listening to all of those groups, hears what it is they're asking for, even if those aren't the words that they're using, right. and is able to kind of shape that and reconcile all four of those groups of desires into a strategy and a vision. And you can tell when it's done well. So. An example for me is um, Blizzard is very passion driven and mm -hmm. I love that. It means that a lot of people have a lot of things they want to see happen, they want to make happen. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the groups that I'm involved with here is the Women's Advisory Council. Amazing. And I love being a part of that group, but that was a prime example of listening. So the people at Blizzard, the employees, started to get kind of this grassroots effort going and wanted to start a group. So I wanted to have a place to go to talk about what was awesome and what was missing and how can we help help grow this and leadership here listened and said that sounds great we're not going to take control of that we're not going to take over that but we're going to empower you to do that and this is you know two and a half years later and we're still going strong so that's the kind of listening that i think that's is wonderful. awesome so what have you done with the uh, women's advisory council uh, we have a bunch of big things that we try to do. Mm -hmm. We do a celebration of International Women's Day every year. Great. So we do a summit. And um, the last one, of course, happened on March 8th, a couple mm -hmm. months ago. And it was open to anybody who wanted to go. So what's great about that is it's a place for women at Blizzard and allies at Blizzard to come together and kind of learn mm -hmm. and um, be inspired. So we've done that. We've also started a few other programs that anybody who wants to take part in can. So we have like a buddy program to get people networked and communicating. We have a lean in circle that's specific to Blizzard to kind of grow professionally. So a few different things and we're, we're always looking for more and kind of doing our own share of listening to figure right. out what Blizzard needs. Well, I think because you just mentioned leaning in and listening to each other, I'd love to hear a little bit more about mentorship here and specifically how that happens and across teams or you know across levels. How does mentorship really come about and exist beautifully, I'm sure, here at Blizzard? <laughs> well, when I talk about mentorship, I also like to talk about sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So to just like differentiate between yes. the two. I love that you also brought that up because <laughs> most people don't know that there is a difference between mentorship and sponsorship. Yes, and so for me, the, maybe the simplest way to put it is a mentor is someone who can guide you, who has been there before, um, who can give you advice and pointers and uh, be kind of a, a north star. Right. And a sponsor is somebody who does that plus is also gonna stick their neck out for you. Right. So someone who behind closed doors is going to put your name forward or talk about your merits. And there's a cost to that and it's not necessarily a bad one to pay but it's something that you have to think about where that person is going to put their reputation on the line for right. you. So it's the more um, intense version of mentorship, <laughs> yes. if you will. So I would say that mentorship is very, very, very 
prevalent across all of Blizzard, which is wonderful. So as an intern when I started, mm -hmm. I had my manager who was also my mentor, mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of assigned to me. And mm -hmm. over the eight years I've been here, I have encountered so many more people just willing to mentor me, willing to take me under their wing, show me how they do something. I can't even list all of the people. There's just way too many. People are very giving here. It's wonderful. And I've tried to give that back too. I try mm -hmm. to take other people. It's a pay it forward kind of thing. Like when, right. when you see that at a company, it inspires you to want to do it right. too. Um, sponsorship though does take a little bit more you know, investment. Right. And so actually at the Women's Summit last year, um, that was our topic, was sponsorship. And we went over the differences and then we encouraged people at Blizzard, um, of all genders, but we encouraged people at Blizzard to seek out a sponsor or seek out a protege or possibly both mm -hmm. and grow a more intense and uh, intentional relationship there. Right. So from that, um, two people approached me about sponsoring me. I did the same for two others. Um, those relationships were a little bit more, okay, I would like to do this, let's call it sponsorship. And that's been going on for me for a year and a half or so for, in those two cases. Amazing. And that kind of like helped me to seek it out elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So one person who is sponsoring you is going to give you one set of experiences, which are super important. Mm -hmm. They're going to help you see like gaps and grow you in those areas. But the more you have to cover all of the different areas that you want to grow in, the more well-rounded you become. Right. So it sort of empowered me to seek out my own. So I did that like two more times. Um, so they, you get sponsorship relationships in different ways but I think that it's really important to have them. You can't be in every room at all the time, right. you know? And having people who are on your side who are really like championing you yes. and being very honest with you. Like it turns out everybody has stuff to learn and having people that you trust to help you do that mm -hmm. is really important. So how do you have a successful sponsorship, right? Are there, do you have certain times that you like to meet with your sponsor? Do you have a re regular meeting time? Mm -hmm. um, are there certain parameters to the sponsorship? How do you do that? Well, I would say it kind of is gonna vary by person and by pairing. But for my personal relationships, um, I, I'm thinking of the four people that I would call my sponsors. And each one of them has a regular, it's about once a month, either a coffee or a lunch, something that's like casual, easy to get conversations started. I try to come to those meetings with questions, with areas mm -hmm. that I'm trying to work on. Mm -hmm. But one of the other important things about sponsorship is that it's definitely mutual. So while it may start out as like, if you're my sponsor, mm -hmm. I'm learning from you about branding and I'm learning from you about how to have a great conversation and be really engaged. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's something that I'm bringing back to that. Right. And it's actually really useful to start the conversation that way. So with a couple of my sponsors, we just talked about that up front. Like there were areas that I knew that they were gonna help me. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, what can I do for you? And that might be a project that I'm able to you know, deliver for them. It might be connections that I have or perspectives that I can offer that they wouldn't otherwise be privy to. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely reciprocal. So it's definitely a mutual sponsorship at the end of the day that makes the best kind of relationships, yes. mm -hmm. right? When you're growing, especially when you're growing in your career, mm -hmm. it's always great, I think, to help other people while also being helped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So I guess let's let's do the lightning round of other questions oh boy, okay. now. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, so what game is your favorite game of here at Blizzard? all time? Well, I mean, I did work on Hearthstone. So I would say that Hearthstone is probably the, the most special place in my heart. Okay. Being a dev on a team that is as you know, tight-knit as that team was, especially on the time, at the time I was on it, right. I was the 12th person on Hearthstone. Oh my gosh. Um, and those people I hold near and dear to my heart, all of them. And it's really fun to play a game that is just a little bit more casual. I, I, not everybody plays Hearthstone that way, but I right. do, and I love that it fits into my lifestyle. I love that it's like bright and cheery and inviting. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be in the tavern. I'm glad we're in the tavern. Like, this is <laughs> no, we're in the tavern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite Blizzard character? Oh. That's like picking a favorite child. I know. Just maybe <laughs> right now in this moment, because I've just sprung this question on you. Okay, my favorite <laughs> character right now in this moment. Um, well, this this could be because we were just watching the Hearthstone cinematic, but yes. I really love Ava. Yes. I love how like bright-eyed she is and how she could do just about anything and how she's willing to try. Yes. Yeah. She's really a go-getter, isn't she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so what is some advice for people, young people, who are looking to get into the gaming industry? This is a really good question because I've 
had this question a lot. I do a lot of like mentoring and talks outside and I think the answer might surprise you, at least my answer. I think that the, the thing you can invest the most in is communication. Um, and while that's not going to take you all the way, you'll need technical skills and experience, etc. Games are a really interdisciplinary field. Mm -hmm. We have all sorts of types that come together to make something that ultimately becomes the thing you play. Um, that's designers and artists and producers and engineers and also quality assurance and public relations and legal and you name it. And we have everything. Right. And we have to work really closely together. And if you're able to talk amongst all of those groups fluidly, if you're able to get your ideas across, that goes a huge amount of the way to success. Right. It's also really, really good practice for you to like talk about what you're passionate about. Um, that can be hard to articulate, and games are also a very passionate industry. So if you can kind of like figure out how to say what it is that you mean and what makes you go and like what gets you excited, mm -hmm. that's also communication, and it's really important to be able to do that well. Definitely. So being able to express yourself in a way where you're understood across different teams in your in your company, for example, here at Blizzard, mm -hmm. <laughs> or just in general in the industry is such a helpful trait for yes. anyone who's looking to get in. So being able to communicate and listen, which is what you said before, <laughs> I'm gonna bring that back. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I think is definitely, definitely a wonderful trait. Okay, so the last question I have is, you just gave us so much great advice but I want one last piece of advice from you. If you have any more to give us, which I absolutely know you do, <laughs> um, about specifically if anyone wants to come and work here at Blizzard. Let's talk about Blizzard. I'm gonna lift up this very heavy box again. <laughs> um, I would say it, there's a whole bunch of different paths here and they're not linear. I mean, some of them maybe are, but there's a lot of different stories. In fact, if and when you do come to Blizzard and you work here, take people out to lunch and ask, because the stories you'll hear are phenomenal and very different. So if you are a young person, if you are still in school, absolutely consider an internship here. Um, I'm a little biased. I did do an internship here, as I said, but I think the program is phenomenal. Uh, it's a great way, no matter where you want to work, to figure out if it's a fit for you and if it's a fit for them, but it does go both ways, and that's what sold me on Blizzard, so get an internship if that's yeah. if that's at all possible here, do that. Um, if you're you know beyond school and you're mm -hmm. still looking to come over and work at Blizzard, I would say that the passion piece is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And everybody has something that, you know, they're passionate about. We have a core value that is embrace your inner geek. Like it's literally emblazoned in bronze outside of our like main office building. And we mean it here. So if you're able to articulate that, kind of back to the communication piece, but specifically, you know, build a project, do something on the sideline, show that your passion is more than just something you say, but it's something you do. If you show that to us, uh, we're always interested in talking to you. And we always need more you know, perspective mm -hmm. and new thought. And I personally really like when we have people come in and have brand new ideas. It's wonderful. And I just heard that the interns come from all over the world yes. to come intern here. Yes, so. as do the full-time employees. Right, so. Yes. Well, I have to say, for the horn! For the alliance! Boo! No, 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 Boo! no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, everyone is for the horde on my channel. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, I'm so excited that we were able to do this beautiful interview here at the Hearthstone Tavern. Oh my gosh. And it was such a joy to have you guys with us. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye.